In this video, I'll show you how to make a table of contents in Affinity Publisher. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link to this file in the video description. Let's go ahead and start off by reviewing this document. You can see we have our cover page. I have an area for our table of contents right here. And then as you get into our document, we have some main section headings. And then in those sections, we have a few subheadings. As you go through the document, you can see this continues with a larger main heading and smaller subheadings. So that continues all the way throughout this document. And then at the very end, we have a conclusion. Now, to create a table of contents, we need to do a little bit of prep work on our document. So I'm going to start on this page that says Save Water, page number five. We want Affinity to know that these main headings belong in the table of contents. So we need to assign these headings text styles. Let's go to the text styles panel. Text styles have two purposes. First, they make the text look the same. If I apply the Heading 1 text style to all of the main headings in the document, they will all have the same font and size, keeping things consistent. So that's the first purpose, continuity. The second purpose is extra important for this video. Text styles tell Affinity that all of the heading ones belong together. This will help us to make an automatic table of contents later on. So let's start by adjusting heading one. By default, heading one looks pretty basic with the Arial font. I'll just highlight this so I can show you that if I click to apply heading one, it loses all of the prettiness that I added to it. So I don't want the default. I'll press Command or Control Z to undo this. To make sure heading one looks just as pretty as I made this text look, I need to update it. So next to heading one, I'll click on its hamburger menu, and then I'll go down to where it says update heading one. Now, Heading 1 has changed to this font that I chose, the color, and the size. So if I click to apply Heading 1 to this text, you can see it stays the same. Now that Heading 1 looks just how I want it to look, I'm going to go through our document. I'll highlight all of these main titles, and I'll click on Heading 1 to make sure they all have Heading 1 assigned to them. With that done, I want to show you something kind of cool. Now that all of these main headings have been assigned to Heading 1, we can update how these look and it will affect all of the headings at the same time. So I'm going to change the color of this one to blue. And then I'm going to update Heading 1. Now all of the headings have been updated and they all have this blue color. To be honest, I liked the orange better. So I'm going to press Command or Control Z a few times just to get that orange color back. Let me just double check. This is still applied as heading one and everything is orange again. All right, we're good. <laughs> It's pretty cool that you can quickly adjust your text once they have a text style. With the main headings done, I now want to apply a text style to the subheadings in our document. So in this first Save Water section, I'm going to highlight this subheading. For this one, I want it to be Heading 2. So first, I'll go to the hamburger menu next to Heading 2 
and then I'll click on Update Heading 2. Now it has the same font and color, which is perfect, so I'll click on it to apply Heading 2 to this heading. Now I'm just going to quickly go through the other subheadings to add Heading 2 to them. To speed this up, I'm going to triple click to select a heading, I'll hold down Command or Control, and I'll triple click on all of the other headings in this section. Now that they're all highlighted, I can apply Heading 2 to all of them at the same time. So I'm just going to do this all throughout our document to make sure they all have Heading 2 applied to them. Okay, so we're all done preparing the document. Now, making the table of contents will be super easy. You can see on this table of contents page that I actually have a text frame right here ready for our table of contents. So I'll click in this box until the cursor starts blinking. And now we can add our table of contents. To do this, I'll go to the top of the screen to window. Then I'm going to go down to references, table of contents. I'm going to tuck this panel right next to our pages panel for easy access. And now I'm going to click on this button right here to insert our table of contents. So now you can see our table of contents includes the main headings and the subheadings from our document, along with the page that they appear on. These are both showing up because over here, you can see that Heading 1 and Heading 2 is checked on. If you only want to include the main headings, you can turn off Heading 2, and now you can see only the main headings are included in this table of contents. So now I want to show you how you can alter Heading 1 and Heading 2 inside of this table of contents, because they actually have their own special text styles. First, let's edit Heading 1. I'll triple click to select all of it, the title and the page number, and then I'm just going to adjust how it looks. I'll start by giving it a new font and increasing the size. I'll also bold this, and I think that looks pretty good. So now, over in the Text Styles panel, you can see we have Table of Contents 1, Heading 1 highlighted. I'm going to click on the hamburger menu, and I'm going to update this text style. Now all of the Heading 1s look the same. Let's go ahead and edit Heading 2 next. I'll triple click to highlight the entire line, and then I'll change how the font looks. I think I would like to increase this indent right here, and we can do that using the Paragraph panel. So in the Paragraph panel, I'm going to use this first section right here to increase this. I'll type 0.4, and then I'll press Enter, so that it has just a little bit more of an indent. Another thing I want to change about Heading 2 is I want to add a dot 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 to connect it to its page number. This is actually kind of tricky to figure out on your own, so I want to make sure I show this to you. In the Paragraph panel, scroll down to where it says Tab Stops. Then go to this parentheses button and change it to this glyph. Now you can see we have dots connecting the title to the page number. I think this looks great, so I'm going to go back to text styles, and with table of contents 1, heading 2, I'll click on its hamburger menu, and I'll update it. Now that I've updated that, I think this looks really good, but I'm not sure I want the page number for the main headings. 
that's really easy to change. Just go over to the heading one over here in the table of contents panel, click on the hamburger menu, and then uncheck include page number. So now we have our table of contents. If you continue working on this document and you end up adding pages to your document, I just want to show you how you can update your table of contents. I'll right click to add a few pages. I'll press OK. And now we have a few extra blank pages. So right now it says lower bills is on page seven but lower bills is actually now on page 11. So the table of contents does not update automatically. To fix this, we actually need to go to the table of contents panel and then click update all table of contents. And now you can see lower bills is on page 11. To finish this video, here's a fun tip. When you export this document as a PDF, make sure that you check on include hyperlinks. When you include hyperlinks, this will make it so that you can actually click on the table of contents inside of your PDF and it will jump to that section. This is so nice for navigating large documents. With that, now you know how to add a table of contents. If you want to learn more Affinity Publisher skills, you can check out my Affinity Publisher course in the video description. You'll learn everything you need to work in Affinity Publisher, starting with the very basics and working your way up to more advanced skills. I really think you'll like it, so I hope to see you in the course.